Hello and welcome. The Eurocylinder exploration series is almost at the end. I have only a few locks left that I want to show you and today I'd like to explore this uh, CES Eurocylinder for you. CES is a German lock company that was founded in 1840 and the son of the founder took over the company in 18. 57, and his name was Karl Eduard Schulte and that's how the name of the company comes from um, from the initials CES from Karl Eduard Schulte CES is still um, a private company it does not belong to SA Abloy or any other big group but itself um, it's operating uh, worldwide and it consists actually um, of three parts. So from the website you can read that uh, the CES group consists of a cylinder, uh, tronics and locks. And cylinder is what we know from from the locks we pick and they also make uh, master key systems. For example they made the uh, master key system for the German parliament in Berlin or for um, for the Microsoft headquarters in Munich. Then Tronics is the electronic part of the uh, security and uh, access systems and locks. I'm not really sure what it is but they say they make um, high quality uh, locks and uh, providing innovative uh, solutions. So that's uh, what CES is. It's uh, still uh, producing in Germany and making locks of different kinds. For example also this basic uh, pin tumbler that I have here. You can see it's a Yale keyway and here I have a Yale blank fits perfectly uh, in the keyway. So I have already uh, picked and got it one side and reassembled uh, without the pins just to demonstrate you the mechanism of the cam. As I found it quite interesting to not only uh, pick the lock but only uh, also um, have a look at the whole mechanics. So that's the side with the, uh, with the pins. So I do not yet insert the key. I show you that the cam can turn freely without um, interacting with the, with the plugs. And now when I insert the key you see that there is a spring resistance. I have to hold and turn and of course now the key is uh, locked by the pins and when I turn it, it gives a sound now the cam is connected and it turns and this also works of course from the other side so this is one um, one responsibility uh, one feature of the of the cam it needs to be able to be turned from uh, both sides individually and may not be blocked uh, because one side is uh, yeah one side is blocked so um, but this lock has um, also this feature that you can operate it from both sides at the same time so I operate it from here and let's assume the door was closed and this is the inside key I can insert the key from, from outside, turn it and it activates the cam and now both sides turn at the same time. So, and this mechanism is, is quite uh, simple, um, much easier than the last that I explored from the uh, wink house and it's also more robust in my, my opinion. But there are two uh, further properties of the mechanism it affects picking and it affects um, opening the um, yeah the lock or um, opening the or turning turning the cam when the lock is picked afterwards so I will show you that um, when I got it so here is the lock clamped in a vise that's the bidding quite nice deep cut at 4, shallow cut at 5 some ups and downs here and this locked up. 
I apply tension from the pin side and I first pick it counterclockwise because that's the more challenging pick. I use that deep hook from Sparrows and it's more challenging because I need to pick pin 5 at first when I pick it counterclockwise and to do so I have to find pin 5 and of course pin 5 is at the very end but to reach it I have to struggle a little bit with this um, cam mechanism get my pick around and now I think I, I set it the first time I picked it counterclockwise I always um, neglected pin 5 because it was yeah, not obvious that there is a pin and then I carefully counted the pins and I found out ah, pin 5 is missing so now I try to set the remaining 4 pins And I try to pick it um, clockwise afterwards to show you the difference. Okay, here we are, got a false set now. I take my shallow hook and there is a spool. And that's the end. There is no more no more reach with my with my hook or with my pick, try to stick it in the hole like so and maybe something dropped check pin 5 5 always likes to drop no it's not pin 5 check the other pins and here we are, it's open. So, you can see um, the cam doesn't turn. So that's the uh, second property that affects picking. Um, you have to stick something in the keyway. Let's uh, get my knife. So stick something in the keyway that you can uh, activate the cam. And open the, the mechanism on the door. So now let's pick it clockwise and you can see the difference. So again I use my uh, deep hook and from what I think is that if there is such a big difference in the um, in the binding order uh, when you pick it clockwise or counterclockwise I would rate this as uh, indication for not really tight tolerances if you have a, a perfect lock um, all pins would bind, bind at the same time I would say Okay, I'll restart. And if it differs so much, uh, I would say that the precision is not very good in this lock. I will start with a shallow hook first. See if I can cause the easy pins to bind first then I continue with the deep hook okay here we are got a nice click and now I think pin 5 is the last struggle with the cam mechanism
and here we are, it's open. So this time no spools were involved um, and the picking order was totally different, so pin 5 was the last. Okay, and yep, but actually it doesn't matter which way around you pick it, because you can see the cam doesn't <laughs> doesn't turn. You, um, you can turn it like this, and then you can stick in something and uh, try to open the door. Alright, let me gut it and we'll have a look at the inside. So, uh, for gutting, again, I have to remove this um, yeah, this ring. There is, again, no clip on this lock, like on the Wilker or Wink House. So, I will uh, get it off and be back. So, all the parts are out of the lock. Now, let's gut it. Plug is flattened. You can make this out. So it's not perfectly round, there is a small flat surface. This makes picking a little bit easier as it makes the shear line uh, wider or bigger. So all key pins are normal. That the plug is flattened, but anything else is normal. Let's have a look at the drivers. One is a very long standard driver pin. Then we have a spool at position two. Standard at position three. And I think it was like that. Spool at 4 and standard at 5. Done out the springs. Big springs, very powerful. Bible, also nothing special, everything normal. So, very nice pins. Very strong springs. Surface is more or less flat, not rounded, also not tapered. Yeah, very nice pinning. Interestingly, the tolerances are, huh, may I say that, uh, so bad that um, picking the lock in one direction um, involves the spools and the full set, and the other way around uh, is totally different binding order and the spools didn't come into play at all. So, yeah, so much for that. Now let's have a look at the uh, cam, me cam mechanism very quick. So here are the parts in this lock and left and right side are working in the same way. The only difference is that the left side is for the, the longer side of the lock and the right side for the shorter, so we have different uh, length of the elements. All right, we have the cam, we have the two connection elements, at least that's how I call them, and we have the two plugs. So let's start with the cam. You can see the, the nose here inside. And there is a co corresponding groove on the two connection elements. And if the lock is uh, correctly assembled, the nose goes in the groove on the left and on the right side and the spring is compressed. So the cam is turned if you either turn the right or uh, left connection element. Alright, so how is this connection element connected to the plug? Uh, if there is no key it uh, turns, uh, they turn independently. Now let me insert a, a key and remember there is a, a spring, so you have to push in the key against the spring 
and now there's a little gap and normally you would take uh, you would turn the key but I turn the uh, connection element so that you can uh, keep an eye on it and now it, it snaps in this groove so there's a, a little groove where the key can go in and now the key is uh, connected to the connection element and because it's the right key the plug will turn and with the key the connection element turns and the connection element takes along the cam by, by this groove here. So actually you are not turning the cam with the plug but with the key. So now um, let's assume you have this other, the other side and on the, uh, on the right side there is a key so the connection element is connected to the key and turns but still this can turn, so this will turn with the with the with the with the cam, and that's uh, <laughs> very good because uh, the other side is of course uh, still locked, and so that's the mechanism that ensures that you can insert the key and turn the cam, although the other side is uh, is still locked. But now, if you have the the key on the other side as well. Of course, now connection element and key are uh, connected, and both uh, connection elements uh, are synchronized by the nose of the uh, of the cam, and so both plugs do turn at the same time. Yeah, very very smart mechanism, very uh, simple, very robust. Actually, I like this. Uh, a lot more than the complex uh, mechanism um, of the wing house that I showed you in my last video with the many uh, different small pieces and uh, springs. Yeah, so that was the uh, CES lock picked and gutted and uh, cam mechanism explained. Alright, thanks for watching, happy picking, bye bye!